Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Today's tutorial is going to cover how to delete everything in a PDF except for a specified spot color. So this is going to be useful if you have something like the attached here where you're sending a sticker design to a printer and then you're going to send the die line over to a separate machine to do the die cutting. So as you can see here, if I go into my output preview, this is set up as a CMYK image for my actual uh, sticker design here with the snake and then the spot color here called new color swatch is the die line so let's say we're gonna go ahead and we need to delete all of the um, CMYK values from this and just leave us with the the outline to send over to our cutter so if I go into my print production I'm gonna go to pre-flight and I've already created this and again if you haven't seen this before you're going to go to options create fix up and you're going to apply these settings here that I have I click edit here and what I've called this is remove all objects except for spot color name and it's going to remove any object that does not match the spot color name that is input by the user I put a little note here that says good for removing all objects besides a cut line so what I've done here is I've actually set up four basically identical um, uh, checks here but this is going to be in the color spaces spot colors and inks uh, fix up category and the type of fix up is going to be called condense into single spot color and basically what this is going to do is it's going to look for anything that is outside of the input parameter that you put in uh, basically the name of the spot color and it's going to delete that and so what I've done here is by default this is going to come up with um, an empty box here because you're you can type in the actual colorant name that you want in this case what I've done is I've created a variable so I, I click out the little um, orange triangle here and I go to new variable and then it's going to give it a key here and then you can label it whatever you want in this case I was calling it um, spot color name and then everything else you just basically leave as is so I've done that here uh, four times and that basically will allow us when the pre, uh, fix up is run it will allow us to put in four individual uh, color separation names more than likely you're not going to encounter too many files that have more than four spot color names in it uh, but if you also if, if you want to add an additional one you just basically click the little plus button here and it'll uh, add a new line you can add as many as you want um, or just leave it by default to just have one. So that's it. That's our setup here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel because I've already created this, obviously. But uh, once we go to fix and run this, it's going to prompt you to put in the spot color name. So as you can see here again, we just have this one here called new color swatch. <clears throat> so I'm just going to go new color swatch. And I'll leave the other three blank because we're obviously not, we don't have any additional colors here. So I'll click OK. It's going to prompt to save, and I'll just call this um, artwork removed. So this will leave us with basically just the die line. So as you can see here, it removed all objects except for that spot color name. And that's it. If I click out of this here, and I click this on and off again, you can see our color swatch is still here. And if I click on any of these individually, the process plates, there's nothing left in the file except for this color swatch or uh, excuse me this die line here so now you could send this over to your cutter and have this uh, set up to do your die cuts this is also going to be useful if you have basically some information or some objects on the page that you don't want in this case uh, let's say a customer sent over this letterhead job and we basically just want the logo here that's in this um, black and this gold color they added a watermark and for some reason they put in this silly picture here right so if I go into my output preview you can see I have um, my process plates here for this picture I also have this watermark that is set up at, on its own spot plate called watermark and then the two colors for the actual letterhead so I'm going to go back to my pre print production, go back to pre-flight. I'm going to run this checker again. And this time, I only want to save these two Pantone colors here. So I'm just going to type 
in Pantone, making sure to keep the same uh, naming convention here. So Pantone 873C and then Pantone Black 7C. And I'll leave the other two blank because we're going to delete everything else besides those two. I'll click OK. It's going to prompt me to save and I'll just call it um, uh, test or whatever. Hit save. It'll run the pre-flight. As you can see here, it removed the watermark and the photo from our artboard here. And we're left with the two PMS colors. Now, obviously, this is just a one-page PDF. You can open this in Illustrator and just make your edits. But if you had a multi-page document that was set up this way, it would be very useful because the pre-flight would run through all the pages very quickly. That way, you wouldn't have to edit those pages individually. And again, like I said or showed in the first part of the video here, when you go into edit, you can add as many steps in here as you want or delete them if you uh, don't feel the need. So let's say, for instance, you're, you're running a job and it ends up being like a, a six color job. You're running it on a, on a six color press and you have six PMS colors. You would just basically add in an additional line here, come in, create a new variable, and then keep adding as you go on and on and on. So uh, that's a very simple little fix up. It's especially useful, like I said, for if you're doing uh, things like cut lines, like if you're setting up, if you have a file and you have a die line on there already and you need to delete everything except for the die line, maybe to send off to another vendor to actually create the die, or if you're sending it to a program that's going to be doing the actual um, die cutting uh, with a digital uh, X axis cutter or Z axis axis cutter or something like that. So anyway, hope that's useful for uh, someone out there. If you have any questions about anything, please leave them down in the comments below. As always, please like, share, and subscribe. Um, if you're interested in supporting the channel further, please check out my Patreon page. I'll leave a link down in the description. I have a few new items that I have set up in the shop over there if you're interested. And as always, I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.